I'm a member of this congregation and also serve in local government in my city and on the boards of regional agencies working on some of our biggest issues, including housing. Perhaps like me, when you first heard the term Black Lives Matter, you thought, whoa, all lives matter. Since then, I've come to understand that I had a big blind spot as someone who grew up in a community like Los Altos in a comfortable home with great public schools, feeling protected rather than threatened by the police. In the wake of George Floyd's death, this congregation has been in search of what it means to pursue justice and equity. As Pastor Kathy has said, equity is a moral principle, and it's realized in part through public policy. I've been working with my colleagues in the public sector to ask how we create equity when some of us start life halfway up the ladder of success, and others start at the very bottom rung. As housing was built in the Bay Area in the last century, people of color, particularly black people, were excluded from single family neighborhoods and reasonable access to loans. They could not readily build wealth to pass on to their kids and grandkids, as many of us have, by owning or inheriting property. The public schools where they could live did not, and still do not, offer the same quality education as our kids enjoy here. Even if we could immediately halt inequity in every one of our institutions, we'd still have people far down the ladder. I've come to the view that equity requires that we make restitution in ways that may be uncomfortable, such as by creating substantial new housing at all income levels in our communities and creating room in our vaunted public schools and universities. Several weeks ago, Pastor Dirk spoke on the challenge we feel in accepting God's call to break the yoke of injustice in Isaiah 58. And he ended with this, you will be called mender of broken walls, restorer of livable streets. I'm grateful for this church's role in inspiring me to be a mender and restorer in the world.